Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for turning up, even if you didn't know. I will be here, that's probably the reason. Uh, my name is Matej Dimic. I'm a principal lecturer in music and film at the University of Westminster. I also run masters in audio production for more years than I would like to remember. Uh, today's subject, uh, black and white with sound, uh, tries to examine a relationship of a contemporary film, black and white film, and the uh, role of a reductive use of a sound and music in delivery of the film narrative. Uh, so uh, before I move on, now we're going to go for something completely different and I'll reveal to you uh, what was the inspiration for me to look into this subject more deeply than uh, I did previously. A couple of years ago I've been invited by documentary filmmaker Mark Isaac to uh, clean up uh, uh, one of his documentaries which was uh, part of a uh, Berlin Film Festival. The film was called The East Coast, Cut by Murder. And when it came to me, Mark told so I would just do the mix and uh, clean up the dialogue and the noise that they generated on location. Didn't think uh, uh, it was possible. Uh, however, it ended up uh, uh, being much more than that, and I ended up doing the sound design. In short, film is uh, a story about a uh, young Polish woman that was found in floating in a canal in uh, London uh, in a suitcase. And the whole documentary uh, uh, was interviews with the people that live alongside the canal and their reaction. The problem that uh, uh, they had with it is that the producers didn't think that uh, narrative was moving uh, uh, quite poignantly enough and talking heads, which in a way I agree with, having a bunch of people talking to camera doesn't necessarily uh, grab and communicate things. So uh, I've, been, I've been asked to uh, uh, do the sound design for, for this and uh, I decided to use uh, opening of uh, uh, opening of uh, uh, the film because film was already locked, I couldn't do anything else and ask them to re edit. So I thought I'll make a slightly different intro, uh, a slightly different intro by uh, uh, having a opening over a completely uh, uh, black screen. So it sounds something like this. to get audience to feel uh, what happened before the aftermath of uh, young woman's death. And uh, this was done solely with the sound and no image whatsoever. Uh, therefore, I looked then into someone of a quintessential uh, films uh, of a, a 20th and 21st century uh, to look whether uh, black and white uh, photography and the sound in uh, its reductive uh, way uh, can uh, present us with the opportunity to investigate investigate uh, the role of a sound in construct of not only atmosphere, emotional impact, but also meaning in contemporary uh, black and white fiction film. And uh, for the purposes of this exercise, I uh, gave myself several parameters. What do I mean by contemporary? That means it's a, a choice of a black and white photography or cinematography in a film wasn't conditioned either by uh, homage to the past style or reconstruction of something that was done in the black and white and, or a particular period. But it was clear artistic choice to use the black and white uh, cinematography as a part of a storytelling. Uh, uh, 
use of the sound, sound that expands the space that it was presented with the black and uh, white cinematography and provides additional meaning that is not represented necessarily purely within a film visual medium. Uh, also, uh, uh, looking at the from the perspective of uh, ability, technological ability to produce uh, uh, films uh, with uh, all levels of grading, special effects, uh, sonic and visual experiences. Uh, I was looking at the decluttering, both in a visual context, i.e. removal of the color, and uh, limited use of uh, sound and music in a film, uh, enhances possibility that stories told much more purely and much more directly to its audiences than uh, with a sort of feed me and consume me type of a strategy that majority of at least mainstream Hollywood approach would have taken. And also uh, three films that I chose uh, as a case study uh, focused on challenging of the genre. Challenging of the genre uh, uh, as, as such uh, and uh, that not everything is black and white as it looks. I'm sure that uh, all of you or most of you would recognize which where these clips come from. First one, among us, Psycho. Second, Lachain, Maciej Kosovic, and third one, Raging Bull. You see, uh, Rocky, Raging Bull. And there is a slight difference between a Raging Bull and the Rocky, and I'm glad that you mentioned Rocky, because, because that's, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, quite, quite interesting. If we were to define these three films, uh, well, let's say, let's start with the cycle. What, would you, what genre would you say this film belongs to? Horror. Horror, Horror. is it? Okay. Uh, Lachain? For people that have seen it. Okay. Action. Yeah. Uh, drama? Social. Social drama, Social. modern, independent film. Uh, 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 Raging Bull? Uh, uh, Hollywood movie, but also it's a biopic about, uh, uh, or should be biopic uh, about uh, uh, American uh, world, uh, boxing champion uh, uh, Jake LaMotta, and uh, story about his life. And all these films uh, are, but at the same time are not uh, typical representative of this genre. When uh, Bernard Herrmann, when asked why he has reduced score for uh, uh, Psycho, and Psycho was released in 1960, so Hitchcock has already made, in addition to his black and white uh, uh, British period, uh, when he moved into America, he has already made a number of color films like uh, Vertigo, North by Northwest, Rope, and so on. So there was a conscious decision by Hitchcock to do the film black and white. And Herman says he was doing a black and white score for a black and white film. What, where the trick was missed in the whole concept and premise of a being so much impressed with the famous shower scene and the fact that uh, uh, that was cut uh, uh, from the storyboard by uh, uh, Saul Bass's uh, uh, designer because Hitchcock was initially against the use of the music in that part and Herman uh, composed it and then brought it to Hitchcock to include it. Uh, that was a completely new kind of worm, which I'm not going to address here, but it addresses the question of necessity, even that uh, that famous shower scene and scoring there is very popular, whether Hitchcock was right all along, because the breakup between Hitchcock and Herman came with, uh, later when uh, they fallen apart, uh, fallen uh, uh, apart from one another in a film called Torn Curtain, where Hitchcock persisted that he didn't want to score in a film where Paul Newman and Lee Bullman uh, are brutally uh, killing a murderer with a knife. So he wanted lack of the music as interpreter and as a bridge to be there. A uh, similar thing could be discussed that in a cycle, uh, we didn't need uh, uh, additional music that re-emphasized what was happening before. Because Hitchcock and Herman have already told us all this in a previous scene. So if you bear with me, I'll unfortunately have to play from the DVD. Uh, DVD. 
Yeah, this is this you know round things that spin. Yeah, I've seen. Yeah, I'm a retro. I'm very personal. Yeah. Hey. What a subject for discussion. <laughs> well, he is the. Well, he is the. Uh, how many of you remember Psycho well? Yes. Yeah. You uh, scene where. Uh, the main protagonist, played, played by Janet Lee, is moving, uh, running away, she stole the money. And uh, money uh, uh, is in her purse and uh, uh, she's driving. Seen visually itself uh, doesn't tell us much. There is a woman in a car driving somewhere. Hopefully this works. I will show you that example and uh, demonstrate, hopefully, that uh, story and everything that is happening uh, happening in the film will be already uh, present there. Work. Heck, also, that was the first time I ever saw the customer high pressure the salesman. Somebody chasing her? I've got to have a look at those papers, Charlie. She looked like a wrong one to you? Acted like one. The only funny thing, she paid me $700 in cash. Night that is falling, and her choice not to turn around but to continue. Uh, uh, dialogue or a monologue or her memory or her imagining now they have discovered money is gone, what is happening now uh, is there. Rain starts, rain and uh, weather as a divine intervention because. What Hitchcock and what Herman are challenging there is not necessarily a horror story about serial killer or murderer that has, uh, uh, is dressing in his mother's clothes and then killing women because he's sexually roused. Yes, it is. But it's much more than that. It's questioning uh, our perception of a 
our own society. Black and white, good and evil, uh, choices and counter choices, and also middle class America uh, that is righteously looking in itself and it's looking for reassurance that somebody who steps out and is outsider will be punished. When the uh, screen wipers come in and they're synchronized with a, a high pitched violin, this is the stubbing noises that we will replicate and hear later on in a shower scene. Uh, when we have a finality on a semitone, uh, uh, a dissonant scale going, uh, going uh, the decision, her choice and decision, and moving from the main road or a light to the side road or a base motel have been made. Therefore, using a very simple tools, very simple tools of a single instrument, he deals with the individual uh, choices of uh, 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 character within constraints of a given society. That's why at the end, when you have a, a Norman Bates finally captured, he's not captured uh, at the same time, and that duplicity and that acceptance or not acceptance is there. Also, we are talking about the stillness, stillness and need of belonging to the particular uh, preconditioned frames. What does Norman Bates do? He stuffs birds. What, uh, how does uh, 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 Marion main character played by Janet Lee feels like, like an uh, entrapped bird? What does she do? She has an affair with a married man. And when she first meets him, you will have her wearing a white uh, uh, underwear. Uh, when she decides to steal money, she's wearing a black underwear. So these challenges between portrayal and using of a black and white photography and uh, uh, simplified score allows you to draw this attention, knowing that, for example, Hitchcock was very influential to call uh, French new wave cinema from Godard to Truffaut and others. We are, uh, we are finding that his approach and Herman's approach in this work have actually helped inspire, for example, in a breathless, uh, uh, American jazz and syncopated beat is used to change completely and dislocate cutting again with the black and white photography uh, as a process. Uh, okay, let me just uh, quit this um, and go back to PowerPoint. Uh, so, uh, in a one thing that uh, Bodwell and Thompson uh, uh, say, which is applicable to all three films, that narrative is a chain of events in a cause-effect relationship of, cu of curing uh, in time and space. Uh, in uh, cycle, we have just uh, described uh, the reason and action and reaction and the result that is happening. In Lacan, the three characters uh, are, uh, again, outsiders. Uh, living on outskirts in projects, uh, buildings of a society. All three of them, however, have a borrowed identity, and yet they're all labeled as uh, uh, unruly uh, youth by the police, and themselves not belong belonging and borrowing uh, uh, cultural sig uh, 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 signifiers in order to seek and try to find their own identity. So for example, and in the case of a raging bull, you have a, a boxer that is uh, entrapped uh, in uh, uh, his own career and uh, uh, is uh, uh, performing given task. And outside of that task, outside of that black and white space that society has provided for him, the uh, question arises whether he exists. All three of these uh, uh, characters, uh, uh, films are using the different uh, sonic uh, tools to achieve the same result. So original score, score in Psycho, uh, uh, found music in uh, Lacan, and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, the final one, Raging Bull, uh, the sound design, which you will see now.
So, do we still think that this is a boxing biopic or Rocky? Uh, and uh, I haven't heard him shouting Adrian uh, yet. Uh, or is this something else? Because if we dissect uh, what's happening there with the sound design, uh, we have a much deeper and much more uh, interesting meaning that underlines something which is just a piping match. Well, what do we hear? We have a subjective hearing of a, a, a groggy and knocked out boxer. We have a sound of a crowd. We have a television uh, 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 sonics of uh, uh, his brother, his strange brother, listening to it. We have a commercial uh, voice of an announcer uh, constantly throughout and commercials in between hit. We also have him hit synchronized with the reflex camera bulbs uh, flashing and dropping on the ground. So who is uh, uh, slaughtering Jake LaMotta? Uh, Sugar Ray or us that paid for our, as a society for our pound of flesh? And most of this has been delivered with the sound and the black uh, and white photography because, uh, again, black and white as a straight depiction of uh, right, wrong, uh, uh, clear documentary and actual, and then a subtext that the sound uh, and music in case of uh, uh, Psycho brings in. I just have one more example to show, uh, uh, which is uh, from uh, Lacan, uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, just a sec. And uh, it shows uh, a mix. In this case, we have uh, the uh, assassin, uh, DJ assassin, uh, the police combined with the edit Piaf uh, mix. say uh, uh, my uh, welcome here is uh, uh, whether a use of black and white uh, photography uh, provides additional level of a meaning with the reductive use of a sound and handling or delivering meaning and truth beyond what stereotypes both of a filmmaking, sound design or music in relation to film are doing and questioning our responses to the uh, film and visual narrative uh, that already exists. And uh, nothing is black and white as it seems, but it may take the sound to see it. Or shall I dare say, hear it. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Any questions, please? Um, I'll throw one in if you want. Um, I was going to challenge your notion that black and white is a binary opposition. I, 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 I would challenge that slightly, okay. I think, because I don't think it is a traditional binary opposition. And the way I was mapping it in my mind mm -hmm. was you could actually build you know, a four-way thing. So you mm. could have the diegetic and the non-diegetic mm. elements of the sound, then you could have the synchronous and the non-synchronous, then you could even add another access this way, which would be how um, how those, those three elements of narrative mm. interact as well when you think about the prolepsis, amelepsis, okay. and, and elepsis. Could I, could I um, just continue uh, to, 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 yeah. so that you can see where I'm coming uh, from on that front? Um, I teach the documentary film uh, for quite a number of years, and usually actuality, reality, uh, sense of uh, 
trust and truth uh, was associated uh, mm. uh, in a documentary film initially with the black and white principal photography. Mm. And film, fiction filmmakers have often borrowed and used that as uh, giving a sense of a, of a real, a sense of a trustworthy to their uh, narrative, which in itself is so, but not. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you flip it, also it is. So they're using pre-existing mm -hmm. concept of our perception of what real or not real, or what black and white mm -hmm. polarization is, and then within uh, a bubble, within, within the concept, taking it apart and provoking using the sound and using a diegetic, non diegetic uh, sonic uh, sound design or other uh, correspondence in there. Uh, again, this is a shrewd and very uh, basic analysis and not, not all of it uh, could uh, fit the size, but it definitely, uh, there is an existing pattern in a strong filmmakers and sound designers working together where uh, they feel that uh, by eliminating certain elements of uh, uh, service uh, and satisfaction and provision in a volume in what we are mm. offering in, a, in an audiovisual experience can leave the space and room. If you uh, put the analogy to the mix, you can put uh, 99 trucks and the, uh, 3 million and 50 plugins on the top. That's still not going to make things yeah, look yeah. better. And taking things out of the box might help us understand the meaning or appreciate and experience meaning better. Thank you. Ross. Yeah, no, I'm interested in the concept of black and white sound, which is used as a visual term to describe something sonic. And I wonder what the sonic equivalent is, in, if you were to give it a, a name. And it seems like minimal isn't enough. It's, it's more complex than minimal, isn't it? So, so what, what, what kind of, you know, maybe and you can describe it through examples. You know, you've got some retro or some, you know, some DIY, and you've got minimal single instrument. Well, so, you know, where does, where could that go? Uh, well, I, I think uh, I see myself primarily as a recovering practitioner and an academic. And, uh, and the artist, and, uh, I'm much more interested in uh, uh, what I'm trying to say with that rather than what tool I'm going to use to achieve it. Because if I do that, I would automatically sort of put the shackles on me and uh, that would limit me. And there are not two same films, even that I use three different films to support the same argument. I think the uh, situation would demand uh, whatever it demands, whether that's a uh, uh, UAD plugin that I don't know how to use and I used it wrongly and then I stumble upon the answer or I purposely put the accordion through the uh, Marshall amplifier and uh, put the fuzz pedal on it and then created a, a sonic sound that doesn't belong to, to neither. But in, in the context of film, I'm much more interested in uh, having the essence, challenging uh, gratuitous use uh, of a music and sound as an emotional background or, or something that you're providing all off the shelf. At this day and age, we are all very much accustomed both to audiovisual uh, elements of, of, of uh, film experience, and it's very difficult for anybody to sell you something that, for we are sonically trained, we can do it. Whether that sonic uh, palette and richness of audiovisual experience also uh, is as rich in a meaning uh, is uh, a different question, and that's why probably returning to the uh, more decluttered or simplified uh, relationship between gives the space for a story to be told more directly. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.